You know your own degrees. Sit down. At first and last, the hearty welcome. Thanks to your majesty. <clears throat> Ourself will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her stays, but in this time we will require her welcome. Proclaim before me, sir, to all our friends, for my heart speaks their welcome. See, they encounter thee with their hearts, thanks. Both sides are even. Here I'll sit in the midst. Be large in birth, anon we'll drink a measure the table round. Is he dispatched? That I did for him, my lord. Thou art the best of the cutthroats. It is good that the delight for Pleonce. If thou didst it, thou art the non for real. Most royal sir, Pleonce is escaped. Then comes my fit again. I had else been perfect. Whole is the marble, bounded is the rock. Broad and general is the casing air. Now I am cabined, cribbed, confined, bound into saucy doubts and fears. The bank will be safe. Aye, safe in a ditch, you pies. Twenty trenchant gashes to the head, the least adapt to nature. Well, thanks for that. There the grown serpent lies. The worm that hath fled hath a nature that in time will venom breathe. No teeth for the present. Get thee gone. My royal lord, you do not give the cheer. The feast is sold, that is not often vouched. While tis a making, tis given with welcome. The to, to feed were best at home. From thence the sauce to meet is ceremony, meaning we're bare without it. Sweet remembrance, sir. Mm. A good digestion, weight on appetite, and health on both. It please your highness, sit. <laughs> Here have we now our country's honor roofed, for the grace of person of our bank will present, who I would rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Please, it your highness to grace us with your royal company. The table is full. Here is a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord. Was it the Moosher hunt? Which of you has done this? What, what my good lord? lord? Thou canst not say I did it. Never shake thy gory locks at me. Those who his highness is not well. Sit! Or be friends. My, my lord is often thus, and hath been from his I, I pray you, keep seat. The, the fit is momentary, and upon the flock will again be well. If much you note him, you shall offend him and uh, extend his path. Feed, feed, regard him not. Are you a man? Aye, and a bold one that dare look up that which might have called the devil. Oh, stop! This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air drawn dagger which he said that led you to Duncan. Shame itself, why you make such faces when all done you look but out of school. Can you see me home? Though what say you? Why, what care I? If thou canst not speak too, if charnel houses and graves shall send those that we bury back, our monuments shall be the boss of kites. Is quite a man in falling? I stand here, I saw him. Why, for shame? Blood hath been shed here now. And since too, the air he made statue purge the gentle wheel, and since two murders have been performed too terrible for the ear, the time has been that when the brains were out, a man would die and there an end, but now they rise again with twenty mortal murders on their crowns to push us from our stools. This, this is more strange than such a murder is. My worthy lord, your noble friends do lack you. I do forget. Do not muse at me, most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity which is, which is nothing to those that know me. Come. Love and help to all, then I'll sit down. Give me some wine, filled, full. I drink to the general joy of the whole table. And to our dear friend Benquo, whom we miss, were that you were here. To all, and to him we thirst, and all to all. Our duties and oblige. Avon, and quit my sight. And let the earth hide thee. Thy bones are perilous, thy blood is cold. There has no speculation in those eyes that thou dost glare with. Think of this, good Pierce, but as a thing of custom. Tis no other, only it spoils the pleasure of the time. What men dare, I dare. Approach thou like the rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros, the hyrcan tiger. Pick any shape with that, and my firm nerves shall never tremble. Or be thou alive again, and dare me to the desert with thy sword. If this my trembling nerves in heaven protest me the baby of a girl. Unreal mockery hence. Unreal, unreal mockery hence. Why so? Being gone, I am a man again. Pray thou sit still. You. 
have displaced the mirth, broke the good meeting with most admired disorder. Can such things be overcome us like a summer's cloud, even to our special wonder? You make me strange even to the disposition that I owe that you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks while mine is blanched with fear. What sights, my lord? I, I pray you speak not. He grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. At once, good knight, stand not upon the order of your going, but go at once. Good night, and better help attend his majesty. A kind good night to all. It will have blood, they say. Blood. We'll have blood. Stones have been known to move, and trees to speak, and augurs and understood relations have, by maggot pies and chops and rooks, brought forth the secret man of blood. What is the night? Almost at odds with morning, which is which. How sayest thou that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? Did you send for him, my lord? I hear for him, by the way, but, but I will send. There's not a one of them, but in his house I keep a servant fee. I will tomorrow to the weird sisters, and betimes I will. For now I am bent to know by the worst means the worst. All cause shall give way, for I am in blood. Step in so far that, should I wait no more, returning were as tedious as to go o'er. Strange things I have in head that will to hand, which must be acted. Ere they will be scant. You lack the season of all natures. Sleep. Come, both to sleep. My, my strange and self abuse is the initial fear that wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed. My former speeches have been given thoughts, which can interpret further. For broad words, and because he failed his presence at the tyrant's feast, I hear Macduff lives in disgrace. Sir, can you tell me where he bestows himself? The son of Duncan, from whom this tyrant holds the due of birth, lives in the English court, and is received of the most pious Edward with such grace that nothing the malevolence of fortune takes from him. Thither Macduff has gone to pray the holy king his aid, that, by the help of these, with him above to ratify the work, we may again give to our tables meat, sleep to our nights, free from our feasts and banquets, bloody knives, receive free honors, and do free homage, and all, all which we pine for now. And this hath so exasperated the king that he prepares for some attempt of war. Said he did with duck. He did, and with an absolute sir, not I, the cloudy messenger turns me his back, and hums, as who should say, you'll rue the time that clogs me with this answer. And that may well abide him to a caution, to hold what wis distance his wisdom can provide. Some holy angel fly to the court of England and unfold his message ere he come. But a swift blessing may soon return to this our suffering country. Under a hand accursed. I'll send my prayers with him. Of 
dragon turkey wolf, which is mommy, ma, and gulf. A river bean, salt sea shark, root of headlock, digging in the dark. Finger of birth, strangled babe, dish delivered by a crab. Make our gruel thick and slab. Add there to a tiger shotgun for the ingredients of our cauldron. Double, 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 fire, cauldron bubble. Cool with the baboon's blood. And the charm is firm and good. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Open locks, wherever knocks. How oh, now, you secret black and midnight hags? What is it you do? A D without a name. I conjure you by that which you profess. However you come to know it, answer me. Though you untie the winds and let them fight against the churches, though yeasty waves confound and swallow navigation up, <laughs> though plated corn be lodged and trees blown down, though castles topple to their warders' heads, and palaces and pyramids do slope their heads to their foundations, though the treasure of all nature's Germans does you tumble all together, even till destruction sicken. Answer me till I ask you. Speak, command. We'll answer. Say, if thou rather hear it from our mouths or from our masters. <laughs> Call him. Let me see him. Poor in sow's blood that hath eaten, her nine pharaoh, grease that sweeten, from the murderer's stupid throw into the flame. Come on, and blow thyself and all this deadly show. Tell me. Thou art no power. He knows thy thought. Hear his speech, but say thou not. Make bath, make bath, make bath. If I had three years, I'd hear thee. Beware, Macduff. Beware the vein of fife. Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man. For none of women born shall harm Macduff. Then live, Macduff. What need I fear of thee? Yet I'll make assurance double sure and take a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live, that I may tell paler to fear it lies, and sleep in spite of thunder. Listen, but speak not to it. Macbeth shall never vanquish thee until great Burnham Wood to hide on the main hill shall come against him. Well, that shall never be. Who can impress the forest, bid the tree unfix his earthbound root? Sweet boatman's good, rebellious dead, rise never till the wood of Burnham rise, and our high place Macbeth shall live the lease of nature, pay his breath to time and mortal custom. Yet my heart throbs to know one thing. Tell me, if your art can tell so much, will Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Sing to know no more! <laughs> I will be satisfied! Deny me this, and then I call a curse upon you. Speak! <sighs> Come in, without them. What's your grace's will? Saw you the weird sisters. No, my lord. Came they not by you? No, indeed, my lord. Infected be the air whereon they ride. Damned be all those that trust them. I thought I heard the galloping of horse. Who was it that came by? Tis two or three, my lord, that bring you word Macduff has fled to England. Fled to England? Aye, my good lord. Time. Thou anticipates my dread exploits. Let the first things of my heart be the first things of my hand. And even now, to crown my thoughts with acts, be it thought and done. The castle of Macduff I will surprise, seize upon fight, give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all other unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. No more boasting like a fool. This deed I'll do before this purpose coup. Our fears do make us traitors. You know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear. Wisdom? To leave his wife? To leave his babies? His mansion and his titles from whence himself does fly? He loves us not. He wants the natural touch. For the poor wrens, the most diminutive of birds, will fight. Her young ones in the nest against the owl. All is the fear and nothing is the love. As little as the wisdom, for the flight so runs against all reason. My dearest cousin, I pray you school yourself. But for your husband, he is wise, noble, <laughs> judicious, and best knows the fits of the season. I dare not speak much further. Things at the worst will cease or else climb upwards <coughs> to what they were before. My pretty cousin, blessing upon you. Father he is, and yet he's fatherless. I should not stay much longer. It would be your discomfort and my disgrace. I take my leave at once. Bless you, fair dame. 
I am not to you known, though in your state of honor I am perfect. I doubt some danger does approach you nearly. If you will take a homely man's advice, be not found here. Heaven preserve you. I dare abide no longer. Oh, whither should I fly? I have done no harm. But I remember now, I am in this earthly world, where to do harm is often laudable. To do good, sometime I count it dangerous folly. Oh, why then, alas, do I put up that womanly defense to say that I have done no harm? What are these faces? Where is your husband? I hope in no place so unsanctified where such as thou mayest find him. He's a traitor! Let us seek out some desolate shade in there, weep our sad bosoms and empty. Let us rather hold fast the mortal sword, and like good men, bestride our downfall and birth them. Each new mourn, new widow's howl, new orphan's cry, new sorrow, stretch heaven on the face, that are resounds with the fell of the Scotland, and yelled out like syllable of dollar. This tyrant, whose sole name blisters our tongues, was once thought honest. Macbeth is treacherous. Not in the legions of horrid hell can him a devil more damned than evils to talk Macbeth. Devilish Macbeth. By many of these trains hath sought to win me into his power, and modest wisdom plucks me from over credulous haste. See, who comes here? My countryman, but yet I know him not. My other gentle cousin. Welcome, Hedda. I know him now. Good God, be kind to remove the means that make us strangers. Sir, amen. Stand Scotland where she did. Alas, poor country. It cannot be called our mother, but our grave. Where nothing who knows nothing is once seen to smile. Sighs and groans and shrieks that rent the air are made, not marked. How violent sorrow seems a modern ecstasy. The dead men's knell is there scarce asked for who, in good men's lives, expire before the flowers in their caps, dying where they sicken. No relation too nice and yet too true. What's the newest grief? That of an hour's age doth hiss the speaker. Each minute teems a new one. How does my wife? Why, well. And all my children? Well, too. The tyrant hath not battered at their peace. Uh, no. They, they were well at peace when I did leave them. Be not a miser of her speech. How goes it? When I came forth to transport the tidings which I have heavily borne, uh, there ran a rumor of many worthy fellows that were out, that by the witch witnessed the rather, but that I saw the tyrant's power foot. Now is the time of help. Your eye in Scotland would create soldiers, help, our, help make our women fight to doff their dire distresses. Be it their comfort. We are coming thither. Gracious England hath let us ten thousand men. But I could answer the comfort with the like. But I have words that would be howled out in the desert air where here you should not latch them. What concern they the general cause? Is it a fee grief due to some single breast? No mind that's honest, but in it share some woe. Though the main part pertains to you alone. If it be mine, keep it not from me. Quickly, let me have it. Let not your ears despise my tongue forever, for they shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard. I guess I did. Your castle is surprised. Your wife and babes savagely slaughtered. To relate the manner we're on the quarry of these murdered deer to add the death of Eve. Merciful heaven! What man, ne'er pull your hat upon your brows, give sorrow words. The grief that does not speak whispers the o'erfraught heart. Does it break? My children, too. Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. And I must be from thence, my wife. Too. I have said, be comforted. Let's make us medicines of our great revenge to cure this deadly grief. She has no children. All? My pretty ones, did you say all? Oh, hell, kind all! Dispute it like a man. I shall do so. But I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember that such things were that were most precious to me. Did heaven look on and would not take their part? Oh, sinful Macduff, they were all struck for thee. Not that I am, not for their own demerit, but for mine! Fell slaughter on their souls. Heaven rest them now. 
Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart and rage it. <coughs> oh, I could play the woman with mine eyes. I could frag it with my tongue. The gentle heavens cut short all intermission. Front to front set thou this vile fiend, the scarlet in myself. Within my soul's light bring him. If he escape, heaven forgive him too. This tune goes manly. Come, go we to the king. Our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for shaking, and the powers above put on their instruments. Receive what cheer you may. The night is long that never finds the day. <clears throat> I have watched with you two nights, but can perceive no truth in your report. When was it she last walked? Well, since His Majesty went to the field, I have seen her rise from her bed, sew her nightgown upon her, unlock her closet, take forth paper, fold it, write upon it, read it, afterwards seal it, and again return to bed. Yet all this while in the most fast sleep. A great perturbation in nature to receive a both the effects of sleeping and the benefits of watching. In this slumbery agitation, besides her walking and other actual performances, what has she at any time said? Oh, that, sir, which I will not report after her. You make to me, and tis most meet you should. Oh, neither to you nor to anyone, having no witness to confirm my speech. Lo, you, here she comes. This is her very guise, and upon my life, fast asleep. Observe her, stand close. How came she by that light? Why, it stood by her. She has light by her continually, tis her command. You see, her eyes are open. I but their scents are shut. What is it she does with her hands? Look how she rubs them. It is an accustomed action with her to seem thus washing her hands. I have known her to continue in this a quarter of an hour. Oh, yet here's a spot. Hark, she speaks. I will set down what she says as to satisfy my remembrance the more strongly. Out, damn spot out, I say. One, two, why then tis time to do it? Hell is murky. Fie, my lord, fie, a soldier in a fear. What need we fear? Who knows it? We none can call our power to account. And who would have thought the old man who had so much blood in him? She will that. The fate of five had a wife. Where is she now? What? For my hand, Mary Queen. No more of that, my lord. No more of that. You mar all this starting. Go to, go to. Thou have heard what you should not. Well, she has spoke what she should not, I am sure of that. Heaven knows what she has known. <laughs> Here's the smell of the blood skin. All the perfumes in Arabia could not sweeten this little hair. Oh, oh, oh. What a sigh. The heart is sorely charged. I would not have a heart in my bosom for the dignity of the whole body. Well, well, well. Pray God it be, sir. This disease is beyond my practice. But I've known those who have walked in their sleep to have died holily in their beds. Wash your hands. Get on your nightgown. Look you not so pale. I tell you yet again, Banquo's buried. He cannot come out of his grave. Even so. Who is your man? Who is your man? I hear knocking at the gate. Come, 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 come. Take my hand. What's done cannot be undone. Will she go to bed now? Directly. Foul whisperings are her fraud. Unnatural deeds do breed unnatural troubles. Infected minds so their deaf pillows will discharge their secrets. More she needs the divine than the physician. God, God forgive us all. So look after her. Remove her from all means of annoyance and still keep eyes upon her. So good night. My mind she has made it and amazed my sight. I think, but dare not speak. Good night, good doctor. Bring me no more reports of them fly all. So Burnham would remove to Dunsinane, I cannot take with fear. What's the boy Malcolm? Is he not born of woman? The spirits that know all mortal consequences have pronounced me thus. Fear not, Macbeth, for no man born of woman shall ever hold power upon thee. Then fly, 
false stains, and mingle with the English epicures. The mind I sway by and the heart I bear shall never sag with doubt nor shake with fear. The devil damn thee, black thou cream faced loon! Where gost thou that goose look? There is ten thousand geese, villain, soldier, sir! Oh, over in thy face and prick thy fear! What soldiers, Patch, thou lily livered boy, death of the soul! Those linen cheeks of thine are counselors to fear! What soldiers, wait face? The English force so please you! Don't take thy face hence! Satan! I am sick at heart when I behold. Satan! This push will cheer me up over to seek me now. I have lived long enough, and my way of life has fallen into the sea or the yellow leaf. And that which should accompany old age is honor, love, obedience, troops of friends I cannot look to have. But in their stead, curses, not loud, but deep, mouth, honor, breath, which the poor heart would fain deny and dare not. Satan! What's your gracious pleasure? What news more? All is confirmed, my lord, which was reported. I will fight till for my bones my flesh be hacked. Bring me my armor. Tis not needed yet. I'll put it on. Doctor, how does your patient? <laughs> not so sick, my lord, as she is filled with thick coming fancies that keep her from her rest. Well, cure her of that. Canst thou not minister to a mind disease? Pluck from the memory a rooted sorrow? Raise out the written troubles of the brain, and with some sweet and oblivious antidote, cleanse the stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff which weighs so heavily upon the heart? Herein the patient must administer to himself. Oh, throw physic to the dogs, I'll none of it. Come on, put mine armor on. Give me my staff. Satan, send out. The things fly from me, doctor. Come, sir, dispatch it. If thou couldst, doctor, cast out the water of my land and find her disease, purge it to a sound and pristine health. If thou couldst, I would applaud thee to the very echo that applauds again. Pull it up, I said. What rhubarb, senna, or purgative drug would scour these English heads? Hearest thou of them? Aye, my good lord. Your royal preparation makes us hear something. Well, bring it after us. I will not be afraid of death and bane till Burnham Forest come to Dunsinane. Hang out our banners on the outward walls. The cry is still, they come. The castle will laugh a siege to scorn. Here let them lie till famine in the ague. Eat them up. What is that noise? It is uh, the cry of women, my good lord. They've almost forgotten the taste of beers. The time has been that my senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek. And my fellow pair would at a dismal treatise rouse and stir as life were in it. I have supped full of horrors. Direness, familiar to my slaughterous thoughts, cannot once start me. Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. She should have died hereafter. There would have been time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. Poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. I come to use thy tongue, thy story quickly. Gracious, my lord, to report that which I say I saw, but know not how to do it. Well, say, sir. As I stood my watch upon the hill, Anon I looked toward Burnham, 
And I thought, I saw it, the wood began to move. Liar and slave. Let me endure your wrath, but be not so. Within this three mile, you may see it coming. I see a moving grove. If thou speakest false, upon the next tree thou shalt hang alive. Thy speech be sooth, but I care not if thou dost for me as much. I pull in resolution and begin to doubt the equivocation of the fiend that lies like truth. Fear not till Burnham Wood come to Dunsinane. And now a wood do come to Dunsinane. Arm, arm and out. If that which he avouches does appear, there'll be nor flying hence nor tarrying here. I again to be a weary of the sun, and wish the estate of the world were now undone. Ring the alarm bell, blow wind, come back. At least we'll die with harness at our back. Why should I play the Roman fool and die on mine own sword? Whilst I see lives, the gashes do better upon them. Turn, hellhound, turn! Of all men else, I have avoided thee. But get thee back. My soul is too full, charged with blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my sword. Thou bloody a tyrant that words can give thee out. If thou losest labor, as easy mayest thou the entrenched air impressed with thy keen sword as make me, make me bleed. <laughs> Let fall thy sword on vulnerable crests. I bear a charmed life which must not yield to one of woman born. Despair thy charm, and have the angel thou hast still served tell thee. Macduff was from his mother's womb, untimely writ! Accursed be the tongue that tells me so, for it hath cowed my better part of man. And be these juggling thieves no more believed that pump their with us in a double sense, and keep the word of promise to our ear and break it to our hope. I'll not fight with thee! Then yield thee, coward, and live to be the show and gaze of the times. We'll have thee as our rare monsters are, painted on a pole and under wit. Here may you see the tyrant! I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet, or be baited by this rabble's curse. Though Burnham would do come to its name, and thou opposed being of no woman born, yet I will try to the last. Before my body I throw my warlike shield. Lay on me down, and damn me him that first cries home. Enough! We missed, we're safe arrived. But death is missed. Hail, King, for so thou art. Behold, where stands the usurper's cursed head. The time is free. I see thee compass with thy kingdom's bow. I speak my salutation with their minds, whose voices I do desire aloud with mine. Hail, King of Scotland! Hail, Hail King, King of Scotland! Scotland. We shall not spend a large expense of time before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you. My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth the earls, the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do, which would be planted newly with the time as calling home our exiled friends abroad that fled the snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his fiend-like queen, who, as to sought, by self and violent hands took off her life. This, and what needful else that calls upon us, by the grace of grace, we will perform in measure, time, and place. So thanks to all at once, and to each one, whom we invite to see us crowned at Scone. Hail, King of Scotland! <laughs>